Hello everybody, this is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. Today we're going to discuss how to build an effective about page. We've been talking about home pages and you're going to see that we carry a lot of our design principles from the home page to about pages also. But a about page is really important. Most people kind of leave it to the side. It's kind of secondary. They don't put a lot of effort into it. But if you look at your analytics on most websites, the about page is the second most trafficked page on your website. It's second only to the home page. So you really need to give it the time and attention it deserves being the second most trafficked page on your website. And the other thing is you really need to understand that the about page is part of the sales process, even though you're not going to directly sell on the about page. That's right. And another thing you need to understand equally as important is that your about page, even though you may think it's about you, it's not about you. <laughs> it's actually about your customers, just like everything else on your website. So as Derek Halpern would say, we both follow Derek Halpern, and he's a great resource if you haven't checked him out. I would recommend doing so. He would say that nobody cares about you. They only care that you can solve their problem, and that's really true. So when a visitor clicks on your About page, what are they doing? They are looking for reassurance that you can do the things that you say you can do and that you can help them with their problems. They're not looking for your life history or your dog or anything like that. Although those may be interesting and valuable in their own right, that's not the information that people are going to your about page to get. True, and your about page is where you're gonna make your human connection. It's where your visitor's gonna decide whether or not they're gonna enjoy working with you, whether you have a rapport or you know, you're like-minded. This is where you're gonna let your own personality come through, where you're gonna let the company culture come through it's going to be more conversational than other areas of your website mm -hmm. and one of the easiest ways to do this is through the use of story because mm -hmm. one people will remember a story easier than they're going to remember like facts or general information so it's really good to use story here to talk in a conversational way be more personable just think of it like you're sitting down to have coffee with somebody and you're just having a, you know, a general conversation where you, I guess, you know, you, you talk about your business, but you're not trying to sell them on anything. I agree. And I have a really good example of this, what I think is a good example. And actually, I'm going to eat my words for a minute because this about page does have a dog on it. <laughs> but, but that creates the human connection. So I should probably amend my earlier statement to say go ahead and put those personal things on there but just remember that if it's not serving the connection you're making to your user and it's not there for a reason and it's only all about you that's what we want you to stay away from so the example page that i'm thinking of is from a company called Vach watch that's v-o-t-c-h they are based in london and they're a vegan leather watch company I found them through some research that I was doing late last year, and their about page is actually the Our Story page. So it's got all the things Tracy was talking about. The first thing I see when I go to that um, about page is I see a picture of the founder with her dog, um, but people looking for vegan watches are generally going to be big animal lovers. They may or may not be vegan, but that's in their personality first and foremost. So it's a good thing to have that there. You make that connection right away. Right under there, she's talking about the watches, the leather bands, and why they are good for people looking for vegan watches. So right away, I know that this is the site that I want to be at if I'm looking for a high quality vegan watch. And she also includes a story about how she founded the company. So she was down with an illness for several months, which prevented her from working at a regular job. And she also needed a, um, she needed a new watch strap. And so she started Googling. When she was sick, she just you know, had her laptop on her lap and started Googling for replacement watch bands. Couldn't find one that was vegan that she liked, so she started the company to fulfill that need. 
And I, as a potential customer, find that very compelling. So I think this is a great example. There's not too much information on it. There's just enough so that I know, A, she has what I'm looking for. B, she's a person that I admire from afar. Maybe I don't know this person, but I do admire what she said. I admire the fact that she has a cute dog that she obviously takes good care of. So like all the things are right there that make me happy as a customer. Yeah, well, with a visual She let you know you're a dog lover, which gave you that human connection, without talking about her dog on the about page. Correct. That's absolutely correct. I think the only thing she says about him on that page is that she runs the company with him. So, there are three things that a effective about page should accomplish. What are those, Pam? The three things are, number one, Your about page should reassure your visitor that they are in the right place. So as I said just a minute ago, when using Botch Watches, I went to that about page to see what she's all about, and I knew right away that was the place for me, okay? And your about page should also humanize your business and tell visitors why they want to be working with you. Make that human connection, uh, which she also does. And... It should give a clear call to action to the user, to the website visitor, to move forward in the sales process. Now, if I go back to that um, page, she doesn't have a, you know, click here to buy or anything like that. But what she does have is a very clear graphic at the bottom of her text saying, here are the watches, (laughs) you know, click on here to shop now. And that's the graphic. It's not overly done. She probably could make that more prominent, but it's certainly visible enough that I know what I'm going to do and I know what my options are. Yeah, yeah. there's really only thing, one thing she does on that page I don't like, and we'll discuss that as we start putting together our About page. So we're going to go through the construction of an About page. We're, we broke it into four parts. Part number one is the thing she does wrong, in my opinion. Oh, okay. And that is... Do not title your about page about, about me, about us. Because guess what? It's not about you. It is about your visitor. Use a good, compelling, benefits-driven headline. Mm-hmm. You know what? It's, it's easy to do. You did it on your home page. Obviously, do a different one now and make it a little more um, conversational and uh not as salesy, mm-hmm. right? Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to create a very, very brief paragraph, a small block of text that is going to reassure that visitor that they're in the right place and that you understand their problem. All right? Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go to part three. Now, part three is the big one. This is where you tell your story. Okay? Now, remember, this is where your personality and the company culture comes through. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the things I always suggest is it's actually a couple of little, what I call mini stories, and that you can break it up visually rather than a big, long story. You know, some ideas of things you can do here. You can tell the story of how you've solved a customer's problem before. And you can even put in like a little short testimonial from that customer. You could under- tell why you understand their sh- problem. Maybe this was your problem and you've come up with the solution. What are some other examples, Pam? Uh, well, like in your case, in your personal blog, you're talking about your values. So yes. you can. You can discuss the story of your values mm-hmm. and why you do what you do. Actually, I'm glad you say that because I had an interesting experience with that just yesterday. So mm-hmm. if our viewers have listened to past episodes of How Business Really Works, they, you may or may not know that I have a personal YouTube channel and website to go with the YouTube channel that's about my vegan lifestyle. And... Um, I would say probably three, four months ago maybe, I made a video about how I went vegan and why. And it didn't, it really didn't have to do with the overall theme of my YouTube channel. It's all about lifestyle and fashion and food. But I thought maybe it's important to share how I got here. 
And so I've had people PM me since then here and there about that video and how they really appreciated my words. But yesterday I posted a new video. It was a recipe video and um, a new subscriber came onto my channel from that video. She said that she decided to subscribe not only for the recipe that she just found, but also because she had gone back into my older videos, watched that particular one about my how I became vegan, and she said it just really touched her, and, she, and I am somebody that she wants to connect with because of that. I made myself vulnerable in that way, and I created that connection. Now, I wasn't trying to create a connection to a specific person. I am trying to connect to my audience in general that comes to my channel. So that was really good validation yesterday that um, that is evergreen content that will be up there as long as I want it to be. And it will always, you know, hopefully touch people's hearts and help them connect with me. So yeah, it was good to get that feedback yesterday. It's funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> and you know, that's a good idea to put a video on your about page. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't all have to be text. But you don't want it to all be video either because, you know, then you lose the SEO benefits of that text. One thing I would say, though, is if you do put a video on the About page, keep it short. You know, not more than a couple of minutes. People yeah. just aren't that invested. They can always find out more later. But right now, they're just trying to get to know you and find out if they can connect and they want to do business with you. So don't overwhelm them. You remember cognitive fatigue that we discussed or cognitive overload that we discussed in the, in the homepage episode. Mm -hmm. All right, now some other ideas of things that you can put in your story. Uh, I know you're very common to see people will go through their credentials, their experience, this, that, and the other thing. But the thing is, humanize it. Tell the story that make them matter. So you could tell a story of your experience solving your customers' problems in a previous career. And it, that explains your experience. That explains your credentials, your knowledge. Don't just list your credentials. Humanize the About page. Um, and also, you know, include your team. If you have a team behind you, Talk about how the team does this for your clients. It doesn't all have to be just about you, the owner. And one hint on how to write story effectively is remember, a great story answers these questions. What, where, when, how, and why. And remember, people buy the why. They don't buy the what. All right? Now, let's just kind of go over some things not to do. One thing you shouldn't do on the About page is get into your entire company history. If you're 100 years, if your business has been around for 100 years, then create a page. If Well, let me rephrase that. Don't necessarily even put it in there other than to state that you're 100 years old, if that's relevant. But if you think that events in your company history and the story of your company history is relevant, then create a history of the company page and link to it from the about page. On the about page, only include the facts that are really pertinent to the story and to a visitor's ability to decide whether or not they want to do business with you. Nobody wants to read the entire company history the first time they meet you. Another thing that I really don't like seeing on the about page is the bios of the team. It's not saying that you don't mention the team, that you don't even call the team by name. It's great to have a picture of the team. All that stuff is really good. The problem is, is when you go into their complete bios and all the information right on the about page. You need to keep that about page short, sweet, and to the point. Always put the bios on a meet the team page and link to it from the about page. Don't put too much on that about page. Remember, cognitive overload. Give them just what they need to make a decision and just the minimal amount they need to make a decision. Okay, so now let's go to part four, the end. Okay. You've written your story, however long it may be, or it might be- Not too long. Yeah, it might be two or three little 
many stories that work together and weave a whole story. So now we're going to go to part four. The one that almost everybody leaves off of their about page. And that is the call to action. What is the visitor supposed to do next? They've just read all about you. They kind of like you. They think we can connect. You might be enjoyable to work with. But then you just leave them hanging. You don't tell them what to do next. It's very important. It's part of the sales process. So what should you do here? What should you do as a call to action when we're not selling? Well, we think about what are our key performance indicators? What's really important to move your business forward? So like if it's getting people on an email list, this is the first perfect place to ask. Don't just put the form up. Ask them to subscribe to the email list and put the form right there. Don't make them look for the form, put the form right there. All right, so what if a free trial is important to you? Then ask. Ask them to sign up for that free trial. Same thing if you like give away samples, that sort of thing. And if you really want to send them to the sales page, don't worry about it. Do that. Ask them to move forward to the sales page. Don't try to trick them. Don't try to sell to them right there. Just ask them to move forward to this sales page, to look at this product, however you want to word it. But do make the ask. Asking is very important because you're in a personal conversation now. You're humanizing yourself. If you were sitting across the table having coffee from this person, you wouldn't just suddenly shove something in their face. You would ask them to look at it. Um, also, another thing that's great to do here is to have them fill out a questionnaire or a quiz or whatever is going to help you move them to the next phase of the sales cycle. All right, so that's your four parts. Part one, the headline. Part two, the brief paragraph that reassures them they're in the right place. Then you go into your story. This is the meat of the page. And then you end with a call to action. Whatever is best for moving your relationship with this client forward. What is your key performance indicator for your business? This is the best thing to send them to. So what about the design of this page, Pamela? The principles for design on an about page are going to sound very familiar to you. If you've already watched our episode about what makes a good homepage design, then this is going to sound very familiar. But it's all the same design principles, whether you're on an about page, whether you're on a homepage. As a visitor to your site, I am going to be affected by the same design principles. So first of all, if you haven't watched our homepage episode, I highly recommend that you do so. We go into more detail there and we give you some additional information. We will put the links in the, sh or the link I should say, in the show description um, and in our show notes. So definitely check that episode out. So what are these design principles? First of all, you're going to separate your page in two sections. So when a visitor comes to your website, the last thing they want to see, whether it's home or about, again, is just this mass of this big wall of information. <laughs> you know, they don't want to see paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. They don't want to see a busy design. You can give their eyes and their mind a good rest and that will actually compel them to keep moving forward in your site if you break it up visually. You can do this with white space, you can do this with color blocks, you can do this with strategically placed graphics. You definitely want to have some paragraphs in there but just don't make them too long. Break up your information into shorter paragraphs and digestible chunks that a person will be able to flow through and not get lost in. So that's the first thing. Don't use visually difficult fonts or colors. That's the second one. So I go to a lot of websites. In fact, I used this example last week and I'll use it again. Even though this is their homepage, still the same rule applies. Um, I went to PuzzleDepot.com. Not only is the, the design visually a mess, but there are lots of like bright blue and then a red on top of the bright blue, which just makes your eyes like freak out when you look at that. It's, it's just, it hurts <laughs> to go to that. I'm so sorry, people at Puzzle Depot. I don't mean to rag on you, <laughs> but you really need to update your page. 
Um, so you don't want to use colors that just assault people's eyes. And you want to use fonts that are easy to read. So that usually will mean a sans serif font. That is a font without a lot of hooks and stuff on the ends. Like if you look at Times New Roman, it's got some decorations on the ends of the letters. You don't really want any of that on your website. Or if you do, keep it at a minimum. Um, I do use some of those, but again, minimum. The third and final, well, probably not final rule, but the third rule of good design is to use images to break up your story visually and images that are relevant to the story. So like we talked about earlier in this episode, the example of Vach Watch, she's got that one picture of her and her dog and that humanizes her. It's definitely relevant to the audience that is going to be coming to her site. It, um, she doesn't go into the dog at all. It's just there to help make that connection. So that's a good way, that's a good use of an image to tell part of your story. Your situation may be different. Um, obviously, not all people are going to have dogs in their businesses. <laughs> I'm on a dog theme today for some reason. <laughs> but, but yeah, just make sure that your use of images breaks up the page visually. It also assists in telling your story. So those are our three rules. Some other things you should include on your about page, your social media links, any links to bios you have on like industry association websites, anywhere they can get more information about you that you're not repeating here on the about page. You don't need to repeat a lot of stuff. People will search out more information if they are interested in you. Also put your contact information, don't make people search. You might have a contact page, but you just went through a human connection with this visitor. And if they want to follow up, if they have a question, don't make them search for how to do it. Put it right there and make it easy. Another mm -hmm. thing that's really great to put on an about page are testimonials. Mm -hmm. But you want to follow the same rules we followed on the homepage episode. You don't want this whole big multi-paragraph testimonials. You want to take the sound bites, just the most important sentences out of a testimonial. You can always link to the whole testimonial, but right now let's just keep it really simple, really short, to the point. Give people the minimal amount of information they need to make a decision. Remember, this about page is for reassurance. It's reassuring the visitor they're in the right place and that they're going to be comfortable working with you. That is what's most important. You need to keep it short. You know, my rule is edit, then edit again, then edit some more. Take out anything and everything that's not absolutely necessary for that visitor to make a decision to work with you. Now, don't sit here and let editing stop you from putting that page up in the first place. Put it up. And go back two weeks later and read it again and say, what can I cut out? A great writer edits and edits again. You're creating a story, constantly edit it, constantly change it. Have this general rule. If there's any page on your website that's gone more than 90 days without being changed, you need to seriously look at that page. Because your life is constantly evolving. Your business is constantly evolving. Nothing should be static. I wish that was possible to do with videos. Um, not that I would want to re-edit all my videos, but there are a couple, actually including the How I Went Vegan one that um, I re-watched it after I got that comment yesterday. And I'm like, man, I could have cut down probably at least, I could have cut probably three minutes out of this video, at least, and still maintained the meaning of it and you know the integrity of it. But it's a video, what are you gonna do? Live and learn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could always take it down, edit it, and put it back up, but that is a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and I'm going to lose all of the views that are on that video. It's YouTube is different. If anyone is a YouTuber out there, this is a tip for you. You can replace a video on Vimeo. You cannot do that on YouTube. I've tried, and I've looked into it, and they don't allow that. And I understand that. I think that um, <clears throat> you know, people liking and commenting on a video and then you change that video, that's not cool. So I, I get why they do that. Um, but yeah, so just make sure your videos are in 
the best shape you can make them <laughs> before you upload. <laughs> All right. I have one last thing to say about, about pages. Mm -hmm. Remember, they're not about you. Mm -hmm. They're not about your biz, your business. They are about you making a human connection with a potential client. It's all about the client, about the client's problem. You're not that interesting. Trust me. <laughs> and if you are, then write an autobiography. But don't put it on your about page. Wise words. <laughs> so we hope we've helped you think through your about page. Uh, give yours a good look. See if you're following these principles. Do you have too much information on there? Are you making a human connection? Is it titled about me? <laughs> I'm going to have to check that on my site. <laughs> I think it just might be. Oh, man. So let us know how you're going to change your about page. Mm. Another thing is we're going to provide some uh, examples of some really well-designed about pages in the show notes. So be sure and hop over to the website and check that out. You can answer your question there. You can answer your question here below the video. If you're on the podcast, definitely come on over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com and let us know there and check out the show notes. Yes, and don't forget to like this episode, share this episode, let us know if it's been helpful for you, and if you are listening in iTunes, please leave us a review. Check out those star buttons, hit those, and tell us what you think about the show. That will help us get found in iTunes and help us to help more people like you grow their businesses and be successful. So thank you for listening, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye.